Our live classes is starting now. Let me without any problem. Uh, we are going to discuss fill in the blank questions. And what we'll do today is these are the questions which were asked in the recent exam. So they have very high chance of being asked in your upcoming exam as well. So you must make sure that you know the answer of these questions and if possible, how to answer similar questions in future as well. Um, I'm giving you six minutes to go through question number one, two, three. That means two minutes per question. Please have a look at the questions on the screen and answer these questions on a notepad so that later on when I tell you the answers, you can compare your answers with the correct answers and find out uh, why you may have not been able to get the right answer. And if you have any confusions, you can write in the chat so that I can answer those confusions as well. So let's start now. Okay, so uh, how do you answer these kind of questions? Let's talk about that. Although we still have a little time left, I just started early because I think there are just three questions and you know, um, you may have already answered the questions. So how do you answer this kind of question? What should you do? Where do you start? How should you start and so on? 
First thing is in your exam, just try to go through the paragraph as quickly as you can so that you can get a sense of, you can get a rough idea of what this topic is all about. And once you have that, what you need to do is you need to pick the words given here as the answers. So how do you do that? What are, what are the tricks to do that? What you need to do is the word which makes sense. So what kind of sense? We say three types of sense. It has to be logically correct. It has to be grammatically correct. And it has to be appropriate vocabulary for that position. Which means, let's have a look at the first question, first gap here. One of the most eminent of psychologists, Clark Hall, that the essence of reasoning, that. So what did he do? He must have done something. So you now go to the options here and you can see there are a couple of words which might be possible here grammatically. He may have devised, he may have demonstrated, he may have conceived, he may have claimed. And remember, this guy is from the past. He must have done this in the past. That's why I'm only looking at devised, demonstrated, conceived, and claimed because these are all past verbs. Now, one of them is the right answer. So which one should I pick? For that, I use my logical sense. The essence of reasoning lies in putting together of two behavior segments. So devised is usually used when you're talking about strategies, methods, and so on. Demonstrated is used to show something, and that's definitely not what he's doing here because he's not actually showing anything. Then we have conceived, which means to receive, to get something, and that will not make sense here. So the only possible answer is claimed. So that means he said something and he claimed about it. So just like that, you go to the next question. To behavior segments in some way. So the word missing here is a word which is used to describe way. So then again, you look at all the options given here and try to think, which word can I use here to give more information about way? And if you do that, and if you try all the words one by one mentally, then you can see noble, which means new, is the only word that makes sense. New way. Okay, so that's the answer for this one. Then you go to the third question. A test. You can see this sentence is two followers of Clark Hall, Howard and Tracy Kendler, a test for children. What did they do? Again, they did something, a test. So again, it is either devised or demonstrated or conceived. Because, again, these people did something in the past, so that means this must be a past action. Devised, demonstrated, or conceived. But it cannot be claimed because it's already gone. And again, just like before, we try to think which would be more logical answer, and the answer would be devised, because we devise a test, a method, idea, and so on. And then you go to the last one. So for the last one, you can see task of learning to a machine. So which will be the answer? Now, sometimes you may have to use some of the tricks that I've shared with you on online portal as well. There are 20 tricks that you must learn, memorize, remember to answer fill in the blank questions. And one of those 20 tricks is after two, we usually use first form of the verb that means in this particular example that would be either manipulate or operate so let me briefly tell you what is first form of verb for example if we think about the word play it's a verb because it means to do something verbs mean to uh, actions they give a sense of doing something so if we think about that we have different forms of play like play played played playing plays so play is the first form or if we think about let's say go go went gone going goes so go is the first form so just like that the first form of verbs are like the pure form of verbs so the answer is either manipulate or operate and i'll choose operate because it's a machine so operate a machine is a better uh, sounding combination compared to manipulate a machine and it makes sense to say learning to operate a machine. So you can see here, what I'm simply doing is I'm going through the paragraph quickly so that I can see what they're trying to say. 
After that, I go to the options and try to pick a couple of options which I think would be grammatically fit for that gap. And then I try to think which one among them makes more sense. In order to do that, I look around. I look around to see which words here in the sentence come with one of the options more often. Or in other words, which of the options sound more natural with all the words around the gap? We call this kind of more natural combination of words collocations. And Pearson's ask you a lot of questions based on collocations. So when you're practicing, always try to think which words are coming together so that in the exam, it becomes easier for you to answer similar questions. As an example here, we saw some collocations like noble way, device a test, operate a machine, and so on. So the more questions you practice, the better you get at um, understanding or using the collocations. Now, uh, we have a question here which says, if all the words don't understand, what can I do? In that case, you can only guess because if you don't understand any word given in the option, then in that case, you don't have any other alternatives. You have to just guess. And it's always a good idea to guess here because there is no negative marking. So if, uh, let's say, fortunately, some of your guess uh, match with the correct answers, you will get some points anyway. Okay, so if you don't understand anything at all, just make a guess and try your best to guess as correctly as possible. And if you, let's say that, that's actually a hypothetical situation um, uh, where we are assuming that you didn't understand anything at all. And I think that's very less likely to happen, especially for people who are going for high score. So a real scenario most likely will be like this. You understand a few gaps and a few um, words given in the option, but maybe you don't understand a few other words. In such cases, always start with the ones that you understand or you can answer and then always guess after you have answered the questions you could answer. Because when you guess with fewer options, then it's always easier for you to make a choice and you have lower chances of making mistakes. Okay, so that's for the first one. Uh, let's go for the second one as well. Now I'll go a little quickly. So why is it a concern? It is radioactivity is invisible and unsensed. So I think they're trying to give us a reason here. So which word do we use when we try to give reasons? Think about it. It is. Now go to the options here. But nevertheless, because therefore, out of all these words, we know because is the only word which we use to give reason for something. So it is because. Now, do you remember what I told you in the previous question? I told you that in your exam, collocations are often used to, to, to feel. And this is also another question of collocation here. If I'm in the exam and in these questions, I'll try to think which of the words in the option sounds more natural with it is. Or which word in the option I have heard more often with it is. And it is because is a very common collocation. So that's another way we pick, we can pick the answer. You know, sometimes what we say, uh, why, when I ask people, why did you pick that option? They tell me, because I thought that sounded better. I thought that sounded more appropriate. If you feel like that in the exam, just go with your gut. Because that means unconsciously, your brain is helping you with the collocation. The reason you are feeling more comfortable with that combination is because you have already heard it somewhere. So that is sounding more natural than the others. Although you may not know why, that's the reason why your brain is picking it. So if in your exam you feel like uh, it is nevertheless, it is, but uh, I don't think it is correct. It is because I think maybe this is correct. If you feel like that, just go with it. That's better. Okay. Okay, now let's look at other questions as well. Uh, in the second one, this is a quite important one here. There is a clue in this question. See this comma here? Whenever you see a comma in the beginning of a sentence, like this, so there is a gap first and then there is a comma, which means you are looking for a linking word. Not just that, it's a linking word which is followed by a comma. So if we think about that, then the common ones that we can remember are however, or nevertheless, or therefore. 
but we do not use comma after but. We do not use comma after because. So that means in this particular case, the answer is either nevertheless or therefore. Now, therefore is used to give reason. Nevertheless is used to talk about contrasting points. Since we are talking about opposite points here, which one do you think we should pick? Look at this. Radioactivity is invisible. That means we cannot see it. And unsense, that means we cannot sense it. And for that reason, is perceived as scary. We understand quite well. We can't see, we can't sense, but we understand quite well. So that means it's a, we are trying to connect to opposite types of sentences. And since I said that we are looking for a word followed by comma, nevertheless is the answer. Can be without ham. In your exam, if you see a gap after it can be, could be, should be, will be, then in that case, always go for a word which is in past form. So my answer, without thinking much, is exposed. Can be exposed. Could be done. Should be done. And so on. Can be, could be, should be, would be. If you see these kind of words, you always have to pick past form of the verb. Now again, as I told you, there are 20 different tips and tricks that you can refer to while answering these kind of questions. Make sure that you remember these tricks for your exam before you go to the exam, because this is another trick that I have shared on that paper. And those levels are orders of above the typical background level. So which one would you pick here? I am not going to pick but, and therefore definitely, because they are used for connecting ideas. Nevertheless is already gone. Because is already gone, exposed is already gone. So my answer should be magnitude. Orders of magnitude. Now, maybe you do not know this, but orders of magnitude is a collocation. And that what they're trying to say is the magnitude, or that means the value is above the typical level. Magnitude actually means the amount, a number, or value of something. So in exams, sometimes what I do is when I can't answer a question, I just skip it and answer all the easy questions first and then come back to that difficult question later on because that way I have fewer options left and it's easier for me to guess as well. Even if I don't understand what the sentence is saying, when I feel like because none of this can make sense here, the one that is left should be the answer. That's another way to answer these questions. Now the third question, let's look at the answer. Then the inbuilt finds nerve. Let's read the sentence. If you, Just look at a few words before the gap. And if it does not make sense, then read more so that you can understand what the sentence is trying to say. Map, mapping software works with your phone's GPS for the location. And then the inbuilt finds nerve. We are talking about GPS. We are talking about mapping. And we are talking about finding. So what could be the word here? If we look at the option, there is gadget. There is spherical, core, true, compass, sticking, pole, indicating, and magneting. And I'll go with compass because I know compass is a device which is used to find directions, which is used to find north, south, east, west, and so on. So that'll be the answer there. Sometimes these kind of words can also give you a clue. Finds means I'm looking for a singular word. Okay, although in this particular question, it's not that important, but in some cases, it might be really helpful for you to uh, think about these things as well. You're facing and the way. Adjusting to the direction you are facing and the way. So what do you think is missing there? Again, think. Now, again, if you are feeling confused, put all the options one by one and think, all the remaining options. If you think that's going to take a long time because there are so many options left still, then in that case, come back to this question later. Because in this case, honestly, I'm feeling like I think I need to think more. So I'm going to skip this and go to the next one. There is north, which is the direction of the North Pole. There is north. What kind of north is that? And true north. Now, true north means um, those of you who are familiar with magnets, you know that magnets actually um, point towards um, the opposite of the pole of the magnet itself. So the north of the magnet actually points towards the true south and south of the magnet points towards the true north and so on. So true north is actually a very common collocation that we use when we are talking about mag, uh, compass and GPS and so on. So again, that's the reason why I know it's true north. 
which is the direction of the North Pole, which reliably stays put. And there is North, which thanks to the flowing layer of molten iron in the Earth's outer, has a habit of moving around. So two things. There is North, there is North. Now I'm a little confused because there is North, there is North. So that means I have to find two words, both to describe North. Now I need to think more carefully here, which one is true North and which one is the other kind of North that I'm looking for. So again, this is getting a little confusing. What I will do now is I'll just simply move to the next question. So uh, answering the question that somebody had asked earlier, what do I do if I don't actually understand uh, all the questions that let's say that I have more than one answers, uh, more than one questions which are confusing me, what should I do? In that case, first answer the easy questions as I told you. I'm gonna only try to answer the uh, confusing ones later on. So in this case also, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm actually moving to the last one, Earth's outer. So at least in this question, I know this is something that Earth has. So now if we go to the uh, options, then what we can see is Earth's outer. Now out of all the options given here, the only thing that is part of Earth is core. So that should be the answer here. Earth's outer core has a habit of moving around. So core will be gone here. So, so far, the only thing that I have done is core is gone in this question, this option uh, gap here, and inbuilt compass has gone on this gap. I still have so many options left. So we'll go through these options one by one now. For the first one, and the way. For this one, I'll pick the word indicating. Uh, actually, I think there is one option missing here. After comma, there should have been pointing. So let's just add that because it's the compass and compass have needles, as we all know, and needles point towards the direction. So it should be pointing. So this is actually the answer, pointing the way, but that's not easy because there are two nerds. And now I have to pick two different options here for nerds. And this is the confusing part. So this is one type of nerd. This is another type of nerd. And I told you that there is actual north and there is the north of the magnet. So now I need to think which is actual north, which is magnetic north. In your exam, unless you have a very good understanding of how magnet works, I don't think you'll be able to answer this question because I know how um, uh, magnets work. So I know the answers. There is, this is true north, which is the direction of the north pole. How do I know this? Because it's the direction of the north pole. So for us, what is north? North is the part of the earth where we have north pole. That's why that is true north. And of course, if this is true north, then the other will be the magnetic north. So this is just a little bit of common sense I'm using here. Because for humans, north is where the north pole is. And that's why that's the true north for us. And then of course, that means the other one will be magnetic north. Okay, now I hope you have understood a little bit how to answer this kind of questions because we did three questions. I want you to try three more questions now, four, five, and six. Let's see how it goes. Um, you have only four minutes, although in the exam you get six minutes, so you have only four minutes right now to answer these three sets. Four, five, and six. So let's start now.
Okay, your time is over now. Uh, let's just start discussing the answers. The first one is leading scientist. And again, as I told you, if possible, try to quickly read everything. And then after that, just look at a few words around the gap and answer the question. So let's do that. Um, and I'm assuming that you have already gone through this small paragraph and now we are answering the question. So Michigan achieves in biomedical research, achieves you always achieve something. And if you look at the options here, it can be their ambitions or it can be excellence. So what I know is most of the times when you have uh, a situation like this, you tend to get confused. And the problem is not that we don't get confused or I don't get confused. The problem is that when I have a situation like this, I move on to the next question because I know I can answer it later. But what I've seen is when most of our students have a confusion like this. They start wasting time thinking, what could be the answer? Is it ambition? Is it excellence? Is it, is it ambition? Is it excellence? And that's not a good way to deal with a situation like this. You are feeling confused, move on to the next one. I know answer of this question, but for now, let's say that I don't know the answer. So what I will do is I'll go to the next question because remember, our aim is to answer as many easy questions as possible first or as many questions as we can answer confidently first and then only answer the other remaining questions because that way we have fewer questions to answer, which means we understand the paragraph better and we have fewer options to choose from, which means it's easier for us to pick the option as well. So anyway, here for this one, I know what I'm looking for. If you remember what I told you in the previous questions, after two, we are always looking for verb in the first form, disciplines, to, to what? Maybe to quit, maybe to accelerate. Now, let's read on. It says breakthroughs and discoveries that will improve human health. So if you quit, of course, you cannot do this. You cannot improve human health. So that means you must accelerate, which means speed up something. So that is the answer here, to accelerate. And then for the next one, it says, with close to 400 scientific staff members, the LSI is exploiting the power of a, an interdisciplinary approach. So it's a something and interdisciplinary approach. So this is a word that is used to describe approach. Now again, have a look at all the options here. Collaborative approach, yeah, maybe. Ambitions approach, no. Quit approach, no. Positive approach, again, maybe. Excellence approach, no. It could be excellent approach, but again, remember, it's a, uh, so excellence is out of question, and accelerate out of question. A uh, simply tells me that this word cannot start with a vowel. That means A-E-I-O-U. So now I think the answer is either collaborative or positive. So how do I know whether it's collaborative or positive? Because both are possible answers. Positive approach is also possible. Collaborative approach is possible. This is a typical situation. And what it means is your examiner is actually asking you to understand not just the words around the gap, but actually the context itself. Because sometimes both the words or more than two words in the option can be possible, but because of the context, only one of them will make sense. What are we talking about here? We're talking about so many people, so many people working together. When people work together, what kind of approach do we call it? Collaborative, because that's what collaboration is. All the positive approach is also appropriate word, but collaborative is more 
contextual word that means more appropriate for the context so i'll go for collaborative now i'll go back to this question i skipped here and let's see what could be the answer for this one achieves in biomedical research and that would be excellence achieve excellence why first it's a collocation and second by now i know all these people are working together to do something to improve human health so that means they want to achieve something better that would be excellence okay that's for number four all right now let's go to number five number five is let me clear this first number five is or fears now fears uh, sometimes when you don't know meaning of the words it becomes a little difficult for you to answer the question fears means a strong and wind always starts in the same way so i think this the sense here is whether it is strong or weak it starts in the same way so i'm looking for a word which gives a sense of weak so that could be light because light also means something that is not heavy and soft same thing gentle same thing so definitely it's either light or soft or gentle because all the other words either do not make sense or are not in the correct form now for wind which word is used to describe wind which is not strong we don't say light wind we don't say soft wind we say gentle wind okay soft is usually used for touch used for material and that's why that's not the right word then after that the air among the sport warms up and rises now think about this which word often comes with a spot now those of you who use mobile phones perhaps can remember that hot spot is a very common collocation right hot spot warms up and rises and the clue here is warm as well it's spot it's warm so that means which word could make more sense hot spot because that's why it's warm and then after that the cold air drops because it is drops so why it drops which kind of things tend to drop think about it which kind of things tend to drop heavy things so again if you read the air among the hottest spot warms up and rises warm becomes lighter and goes up hot cold becomes heavier and it drops so it makes perfect sense now some wind circulates within a small area others blow in the globe again think which word often is used with globe and that would be entire globe which means entire earth entire globe so again that's a collocation so that's answer to question number five. Now let's go for six. This article makes between Australia and seven other OECD countries in fertility rates between 1970 and 2004. Makes. Now look at all the options. Which of these options we make? Make comparison, make sense, make association, make accelerating, make gaps, make notions, make patterns, make postponing. Out of all these, I think only two words often come with makes. They are comparisons and make sense. So now this article makes sense between, this article makes comparison between. Of course, comparison is a better one because com makes comparison between. That's the complete collocation. You are comparing Australia with other OECD countries. Then after that, changing age of fertility, changing age of fertility are also compared and show that for most of the countries, changing age, age what? Again, you have to think which word is more likely to come with age changing age what changing age what are also compared now there is a very important clue here if you look carefully look at this word let me draw something here r r means the word i'm looking for is a plural word look at the options here comparisons is already gone so it's maybe association, maybe gaps, maybe notions, maybe patterns. Now, changing age, which word sounds better? Changing age, associations, changing age, gaps, changing age, notions of fertility, changing age, patterns of fertility. Patterns, 
because changing age pattern, that's what they're trying to say. But nowadays, the uh, childbearing age or women uh, giving birth at a particular age is changing. Maybe in the past, they used to give birth at an earlier age and now they're giving birth at a later age. So the answer is patterns. And for me, the clue was, first, it's something that is changing. Second, it's a plural word because of R. And then now, women are childbirth and having fewer babies. Most of the countries, women are childbirth and are having fewer babies. They're having fewer babies. So what can result in having fewer babies? What do you need to do to childbirth if you want to have fewer babies? You can look at the options. Which one of these things, if you do, you will have fewer babies? And the answer is postponing. Because if you are postponing childbirth, then you will not have babies. Again, another logical answer. But not just that. Look at this. This word is coming after R. And we know that after is, am, are, was, where, we need ing verbs. Like this one here, postponing. That was another clue. Because accelerating definitely is not the answer, although it has ing. Why? Because we have fewer babies. If you accelerate, then you will have more babies. So now this is a perfect example of how to answer the question. See, accelerating and postponing. Both are grammatically possible because both are used after R. But postponing is a better choice because they have told us here that they are having fewer babies. And that's possible only when you postpone childbirth. Now the last one is the up women's education levels and rates of employment with fertility are also explored. The of women's education levels. What do you think? They are they are checking women's education level and rates of employment. So what do you think they are trying to do here? One, two. When you are doing two things together and you are comparing. What is that called? And remember, again, it's R. So that means it's a plural word. They're exploring something, something that is in plural. So the answer is association. Because associations has S at the end, which means you will use R for this. And because you're talking about relationship between two, of course, that is called associations. So See, this is how you tend to answer the question. So you might feel like, but that's a lot of thinking. Actually, when you keep practicing, you don't really need to think through uh, the questions like this. It just happens. So you, just, you just do the right thing only. It's just that when you are practicing initially, you think. But when you keep practicing the same thing, you don't have to think. It just becomes your second nature and you only pick the right answer. Now, you have two options here. For those of you who are appearing in the exam soon or who can think that they don't have that much good English skill. In that case, just memorize these answers because these questions are likely to come in your actual exam as well. So even if you don't know what, why the answer is the answer, just make sure that you know and remember the answer. But those of you who have time and who actually uh, can understand what I'm saying right now, please try to focus on the concept part as well because that way you don't really need to memorize anything. You can just answer the question no matter they repeat the question or they don't repeat the question. Okay, so that's until number six. Now let's do from seven to 10. That will be the last segment. And after that, from 11 to 20, you'll have to answer the questions yourself and I'll send you the answers in your email as well. In order to get the answer, just make sure that you request for the answers to these questions and I'll send you the answers too, okay? If you don't send me the request, I'll not remember who had joined the, uh, the class and I'll not be able to send the answers to you. Okay, let's, so let's quickly do the rest of the questions as well. From seven to 10.
Okay, guys, the timer is ringing now, so which means now we need to start discussing the answers as well. So let's quickly do that. And some of you are um, telling me that you will find answering these questions a lot difficult, and that's quite natural because you are doing it for the first time, some of you. And of course, it can be difficult for anyone when you're doing it for the first time. So don't lose your heart because it's easier with time and of course, you have more time to this and you have to practice more. Uh, nothing happens just out of blue. We need to make sure that we have spent enough time learning the skill, perfecting the skill and so on. So anyway, um, so let's look at the question number seven, Milky Way system. Stars and the material between them are almost always found in gigantic systems called galaxies. So this is a word which I would use to describe systems. Again, look at the options, which words are used to describe systems. And remember, these are the systems related to galaxies. So don't just pick any word. Only focus on the words which will be used to describe systems related to galaxy. And when we do that, I think most of you will pick words like solar because solar system is a very common collocation and it's a mistake because remember i told you that sometimes more than one word can sound natural with the words around the option and solar system that's your natural choice you quickly go to that but just hold on and think if there are other words as well which can be possible now, of course, your vocabulary becomes very important at this stage because if you haven't heard that before, you'll not be just able to figure it out in the exam. Um, but those of you who are preparing the exam later, at least you have heard it now, which means in the exam it will be easier for you. The other word, which is also used to describe a system, is stellar. Now, stellar system and solar system, what is the difference? Solar system means the system of sun, Stellar means the system of the galaxy, and we are talking about galaxy, not just sun. Sun is just one of the um, um, bodies, um, galactic bodies, and there are many galaxies in the universe. And so when we are describing all those galaxies and those systems, we call them stellar systems. So the answer is a stellar system for that. And second one is uh, to be one of the two systems in the local group of two dozen or so galaxies. Now think, again systems. So which word would you pick now? Which word? Which system do you think it is? One we have already used. Stellar systems. And again there is another word. Systems. So which word can be used to describe systems? One of the two systems. Maybe one of the two huge systems. Maybe one of the two um, largest systems which one did you pick one of the two largest systems in the local group of two dozen or so galaxies now if you are thinking why not hues because hues is considered an informal word and as much as possible we always go for the formal options if i'm given an option between uh, large and huge i'll go for large just remember that for the exam the other is the Andromeda galaxy. It more than 100,000 light years from one end to the other. It more than 100,000 light years. It what? Again, sometimes in your exam, common sense and a little bit of knowledge can help you a lot. Light years actually means the distance. When we are measuring the distance between planetary bodies, we measure them in light years. It is not uh, years, it actually is the distance. One light year actually means the distance light would travel in one year would be one light year. So because these planetary bodies are very far from us, we measure them in light years. And if we say two light years, that means if the light starts traveling from that body to earth, it takes light at least two years to reach earth so that means we are actually talking about distance we are actually talking about distance so which word do you think can be used when we are talking about how um, expanded something is how much area something is covering how large something is it stretches because we use the word stretch to talk about 
the expansion of something, area of something. So it stretches more than 100,000 light years from one end to the other. And it is, again, which one would you pick now? And it is about 2 million light years from us. And it is, so we are talking about how far it is from us. That means it is located. It is located about 2 million light years. 2 million light years. Now think, 2 million light years what? Uh, I think there again is a problem here. We have two words with the same spelling, distance and distance. This one is not actually distance. So let me get rid of that. I'm sorry about that. This is actually distant. So do you know the difference between distance and distant? Distance means noun and distant means distant means adjective. So the the gap between two things can be called a distance. And if one is really far from the other, we can call them distant. That means very far from something. So the answers here are, and it is, it is located about 2 million light years distant from us. That means at that distance from us. So distant. So no, again, I have written the same thing again. Distant. Okay, so the answer for this one is distant. Now the question number eight, warfare morality. First, who do contribute and are responsible are either to the free riders, are either to the free riders. Remember, after to, what do we need? Verb in the first form, to educate, to compel, to forge, to tolerate. Lack and effects cannot be the answer. It can be educate, it can be compel, can be forge, and can be tolerate. Educate, you know the meaning. Compel means to force somebody to do something they don't want to do. To tolerate means to bear something, something unpleasant. And forge can have two different meanings. Forge, one means to come together, to mix together. Forge can also be used to make something fake. For example, forgery of money. That means you are just minting your own money. You are just making your own notes so that you can do some kind of black marketing. So anyway, forge will not make any sense here. Why? Because as I said, it can mean either to come together or to do something illegal, like um, printing your own money and both are not the cases here. So forge is impossible. Compel, maybe. Tolerate, maybe. Educate, maybe. So now let, now I need to spend more time to understand this because it's not coming out naturally. So I, I will start reading more of the sentences here so that I can understand what is happening here. And now I know the answer should be tolerate because there are these are people who are paying money and they have to bear the free riders who don't pay money because later on in the sentence, it says refuse to pay for the up there is uh, for the up their responsibility or trust the state to them so that means these people these people who actually pay have to tolerate the others who do not pay and after that refuse to pay for the what effects of their irresponsibility uh, or trust the state to educate them so the sense here is there are some people who pay the money when they are writing the public services, but at one stage, they might say, no, we don't want to pay for other people or the state should tell those people to pay for their ride. So that's what the sense is. So warfare morality. In this, if you get this question, make sure that you remember these answers. American people. First one, through the of all Americans. The American people creating a nation and society examines US history as revealed through the of all Americans. Reveal through the. Reveal means to show something uh, through the of all Americans. So through the what of all Americans. And remember, whatever it is, it can be either ordinary or extraordinary. So which of these things can be ordinary or extraordinary? Try to pair the words given there with ordinary and extraordinary. You will find the answer easily. 
through the experiences because the experiences can be ordinary experiences extraordinary experiences so what they're saying is they're trying to show something through the experiences of all americans then after that with a thought provoking and rich presentation the authors explore the complex lives of americans of all national something and cultural backgrounds national something cultural backgrounds look at this we have and before and we have two things after and we have two things after and we have cultural backgrounds before and we have national now i am seeing a pattern here if the pair after and is cultural and backgrounds the pair before and should also be national and a plural word most likely so could be origins could be beliefs could be materials could be events could be reasons now let's go one by one lives of americans of all national events no americans of all national events will not make sense americans of all national reasons again does not make sense because if if you're talking about reasons inside america of course they are national reasons that's why they are american reasons so you don't say national reasons of america because it cannot have international reasons so that is also out of question now national materials people are not materials not possible national beliefs national origins national origins is a better choice because we are talking about backgrounds origins they match from where you come so origins is a better choice now a uh, uh, tip for you in your exam when you have and both sides of and will have similar types of words national origins cultural backgrounds origins backgrounds these words are also matching and in all of the country now you can think of the country of the country which of these words could be of the country and it's everywhere so which word would you pick reasons in all the reasons in all reasons of the country so the last one for today's discussion is iceland on average iceland a major volcanic event once every five years so what do you think what happens to iceland iceland experiences a major volcanic event once every five years to experience something means to experience something good or bad to experience an event since the middle ages a third of all the lava that has the earth's surface has erupted in iceland now what would you pick here after has have and had you usually pick a word with ed that means you usually pick a past verb has run has played has found and so on and if that is the case there is only one possibility has covered because that's the only word in past form so that's the answer this estimates this estimate does not include eruptions so think which kind of eruptions they're talking about eruptions means it's like explosion so which kind of eruptions do you think they're talking about <clears throat> and for that we have to read on and we see which are much more extensive than those on the land surface means these are the ones that do not happen on the land so look at the options which one of the options tell you that it does not happen in the land and that is submarine because submarine is something that happens inside the water if you have heard these words before submarine for example means below the surface of water submarine can also be used to describe different kind of ships vessels and so on so that is submarine eruptions the clue was in the next part of the sentence so these are 10 questions for today's discussion if you did not understand anything in today's discussion please write an email so that i can answer those questions and in the future when you are watching these videos and if you don't understand something immediately write in the chat so that i can answer your question immediately remember unlike the classroom environment here you have to be proactive because otherwise i cannot see your face and i can't see who is getting the idea and who is not so just write in the chat when you have a problem and don't wait until the end because by that time you will forget the questions Anyway, um, this is just a makeshift arrangement for um, our classes until the situation settles and we have something better. And 
very soon, uh, once everything settles, uh, I think even before that, we'll be able to uh, do all of this on our website itself because that's what we are working on just because of uh, the shutdown in India as well. We were not able to, to and we had to do this. Eventually everything will be uh, done automatically from the website. So that's it for today. Please write me an email if you have any concerns or problems and all the best for your exam. I'm shining off now.